Hi, I'm Gary Allen, welcoming you to a new project. We brought you out here in a, a wooded lot that really, we're gonna spend some time prepping and cleaning today. The palmettos come out so that we can clear and open up this beautiful view here. Backyard setting. Woodsy, we wanna establish the character of the trees and we've got grading to do and so much preparation. We'll spend time on the ground floor on today's Designer's Landscape. We've come in at this stage of the game really to, to end up prepping the job site. It's a new home, new home construction. This pool will have a screened enclosure over here and the back side really falls off. I mean, we're probably 15 or so feet down to the edge of the intercoastal here. And not that that presents a problem, but just for stabilization's sake, uh, we're gonna need to probably bring in some sod and roll it down to really hold the embankment here, especially with the pool this close. As you can see, we have done some selective clearing here, uh, bringing some of the palmettos out. We also have cans and bottles and canned paint tops and everything down there. Our goal is to clean the site up. Again, um, the palmettos, a little snaky feel attached to them, but also to appreciate this view. You see, uh, the pool guys left a big clump of dirt and then this hole. So we'll be doing some grading here. And now with the palm meadows really removed, we can see what our existing grade is. We brought in a track hoe and I'm gonna use it probably to do some clearing over there. And we wanted to rake very softly around these tree roots in order not to really scar them up. Now, the interesting thing to note here is that the Bobcat track hoe had rubber feet on them and to ensure not doing too much damage around the surface of these tree roots. So, Digging very carefully, it allowed me to come out to the edge of the bank and grab as far as we could to pick up these big, long, spider-like palmettos that are native to this Florida climate and establish maybe some open character. When you go back and look at what this looked like just really moments ago, before I began clearing, it's come a long way. We've taken it, pulled it up here, we're piling it up and we'll haul it off to the dump. Some of it has to be hand prepped and hand cleared down there. But really, this is now allowing us to capitalize on the view, even over here, a part of the yard that's really wasn't planned to be used. Now we can bring in some sand, float this off, irrigate it, and you'll be able to see the water, not just from the pool, but enable to come down here in a nice curved radius of sod, maybe with a bench, a little getaway spot. Well, the front yard requires uh, a lot of prep and grading too. What I actually did was uh, brought my vehicle in here. We've graded a lot of this down. We've got our base grade all set. And we wanted to kind of etch out some areas for the driveway to be formed up. Uh, so I brought my truck in here and really kind of tried to s spin out a little bit to portray these marks. This is what we've got planned, a circular drive that'll bleed into another drive that goes around to the garage. We can kind of talk about that for a moment. This is your first look at the front of the home. Uh, quite massive. I mean, the columns here, we've got two stories and we need some big trees, something to bring scale to the front of this house. So we're thinking about some palm trees here and that's a change from our original plan, but I think they'll only look better. Maybe a grouping, one, two, three, tall, medium, and small, one, two, three on both sides, and then maybe something out here in the semicircle island. Uh, take a look from up top again. The driveway will be circular in nature, but then we'll meander two driveways into one that'll go around the back to the garage. And I really think our goal here is going to be to take this circular drive part, move some curves and trees and plants in through here so that we can get some movement across this concrete entry. We don't want it to dominate the front yard. So again, take a look before things start changing as we add trees, sod, beds, plants, and our final product, we'll be changing this picture drastically. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the system is in. System's in. Ready to plan. Uh, friends, meet John Reidenheimer, Bold City Irrigation. Uh, John has installed our sprinkler system here for us, fully automatic and ready to go, you say? Yes. Um, John, tell us, as an irrigation contractor, when you visit a new site like this, what do you have to think about? What are some things you have to consider? First and foremost is our water supply. We have to figure out if it's going to be the city water, it's going to be a well. Uh, no matter what it is, we have to determine what it's going to be and how much water we have. How many gallons per minute you're really minute you to work with? Yes, and we're fortunate here. We have a city domestic water meter. We have 30 gallons a minute here. Good. How about the location of that meter? Does that play a role in when you're starting to figure out the site? What's yes, going it does. Where? It determines on this particular house, the meter is on the left side of the house, so we put the bulk of our electric valves on the left side, minimize the main line, the amount of pressurized line you have in your yard. And the garage is over on that side too, exactly. and that's where the controllers go. Right, short so. wire runs. Everything worked out just fine on this house. Everything was right there on one side of the house. Good. I noticed you placed the valves together. You, you had two larger valve boxes with three valves in each. Right, right. Uh, it's better to keep all the valves as close as you can together instead of scattering them throughout the yard and you, over time you lose track of where the valves mm -hmm. are. If they're not get, located properly. Right, or, it gets very costly when somebody works on your system if they don't know where your valves are. Sure. So this manifold, this grouping them together, at least in two places, yes. you've got a bigger valve box that, that's more or less going to be there and be recognizable. Right. Noticeable. Easier to maintain also. Uh, good. Now, how many gallons a minute do we have to work with? Here we had 30. Uh, we never used the maximum amount of water. We used. We decided to use 20 gallons a minute here instead of the 30. I hear you say that, but, but why? Okay, we want to be able to run other things while the irrigation's on. If uh, water in, usually early, early in the morning, but if somebody gets up, decides to take a quick bath, uh, wash the dishes, whatever the case may be, we want our system to work 100% while they're doing other things okay, around so the house. Okay, so it doesn't exhaust or deplete the total water supply for the house. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Plus, uh, if it, most people water at the same time as most neighborhoods. Everybody's water's on at the same time. Mm -hmm. You don't want to maximize your water pressure. Or what happens if they add more houses to the subdivision or the development and all of a sudden you don't have the same amount you did? Exactly. And then you'll be calling somebody out to come mm -hmm. split your zones very costly. And Well, so what's the cost going in, though? I mean, what are we actually looking at to to downsize and, and have more zones. You may add one extra zone or so to it, the property. At the most, you're out of valve, a little bit of wire, a little bit of pipe, uh, but you're, you've got a system that works 100%, it works strong, it, you can, you know what, you go wash your car, whatever you need to do, and you, you don't have to wait till your sprinklers go off to use your water. I was just thinking of something else. In many cases, we would want to add an extra head or so to a zone. Exactly, and it change be, the landscape. Wouldn't be totally maxed out where you, Not at you all. couldn't do that. It would it would save some safety there. Exactly, add away. A lot of people take sod up, put a bed in there, add a tree, want to add a sprinkler head. It's plenty of room on the zone. Super. Zones. Now, I see probably four or five different uh, colors of flags, and you you kind of go with the, the method? Color, the color coding is more for our use. Of course, the flags tell where each one flag signifies one head, but for our use, I when I break the zones down, I color coordinate it. So my guys, when, when they're in here piping, using their trencher, they know, for instance, this is a blue zone, aim for the blues. Okay, the next so zone is yellow, aim for the yellow. One zone color for sprays, one for rotors. And uh, different not, yeah, usually, yes, uh, we don't have a certain color for each one, but at least we know. It, where it just makes things quicker. Time sure. is money, so if sure. I can speed up the guys any at all, this little bit helps. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> we have a riser here, and I see most of them going kind of up around the house. Huh? Yes. Uh, before we started, uh, I took your landscape plant, show me where all the plants go, and we put the risers where the plants are going to go. We put pop-ups where the turf is going to go. Uh, in this case, it showed a bed coming right around the corner here. Right. We kept plenty of room between the riser and the pool screen just to keep the blowback to a minimum. And Good. It just, it just all and around, it's better to keep You painted these... Uh, Flat uh, black. Uh-huh, and they really blend in better. It kind of looks better than having white PVC pipe yes, around does. the house. Yes, it does. And we use flat black, not gloss, because gloss stands out. Flat black will blend in with just about any, any color you use. Now, if the shrubs aren't quite this big or they get bigger, we can add to or take away pipe here and make sure. adjustments with Sure, sure. When you're done with your landscape, we come back on a courtesy visit and we adjust all the heads up or down according to your landscape and we make sure, very importantly, that the heads pop up through the turf. Good. I just had another question that came to mind. How often would you recommend, even on a new system, for a homeowner to have their system or to check it and go through it? When the way plants grow, the way... Ideally, if you had time every week, you should do a quick check, but at the very least, once a month, you should go out, take a 
20, 30 minutes of your time, go through the zones and literally get out there and walk your zones. Make sure you have to check your heads for clogs, for adjustments, because things do get out of adjustments. So I noticed month, too, you know? when we have droughts or drier period of time, you may notice dry spots too, and that's yes. when you can make adjustments there. Exactly, huh? exactly. But John, we uh, certainly appreciate your handiwork in Bold City helping us out on the job. Sure. And, uh, we know now that we have really an insurance policy for yes. a good looking landscape. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Friends, now we're ready for another exciting part. We're going to place these palm trees in our landscape. Freddie's actually going to rig it up where that palm will stand more erect. We've already got a couple set in, but I want to show you the impact that these trees are going to provide. Cabbage palm is our palm tree of choice here. Sable palmetto, it's the Florida state palm tree. They're hardy, pretty tough. and we know they'll make the transition. Let's take him to the hole. Okay, while well the guys are uh, starting to dig our last three receiving holes, I'm doing a little fine tuning and grading here. We're not gonna put water rings around these trees because we're not going to water them by hand. We have an automatic sprinkler system in, irrigation system, that'll really take care of all the needs that these trees and the other plants have. Basically, when you think about it, all the stored water for this tree is in this trunk. That's why we cut a lot of the heads off to eliminate some of the drying out potential. Trees dry out through their leaves. So by cutting the fronds down to this minimal head size, we reduce the dry out potential, hence, a better plant success rate. We hadn't really talked about the driveway, so I want to take you around and show you how we finished off here at the back. Now, this may happen to you. It, it happens to me all the time as a, a contractor, and that is uh, you set up, you do prep on a grade, and then they come in and pour the sidewalks and the driveway above grade. So what's happening here, I've dumped some dirt you know, in here where we need to really bring this back up to grade. Can you see the, the recess here? It's four or five inches. And so w naturally we've got to get up. We want the water from the inside of the sidewalk to pass over and then drain out this way. I can show you too. We've had some rain last night and a day or so ago. And so we're really washing out our drain spot right here. And, and that's fine. What it's telling us is that it wants to go this way. And that means now with sod, we'll stabilize that and we'll actually let the water sheet flow all the way off there. So we got this little dressing to do. Now what do you say we head to the front and install the palm trees right near the house and in the semi-circle island? It's going to look good. Now we're looking forward to the accents and the softening that the palm trees will add to the front here. We've pre-dug our holes. We want the taller trees in the back. So Josh brings tree number one in with the bobcat. Because he couldn't get too close to the hole itself, we actually stand the tree up, the manpower we have there, packing as we go, and then we finally straighten it all together and pack it tight again. Now, let's move on to our second tree. The tallest one has been established. Number two should be, well, uh, 10 to 12 foot overall height, clear trunk. Number two installed. And finally, our third tree, eight to 10 feet height installed, gives us a triangle and completes this little cluster on the left side. Now, as we move to the right side, again, tree number one going in, the tall one. The second tree, our next tallest. And finally, again, completing a triangle, a clump or cluster of three on both sides of the entrance. Now we feel like we have framed in the tall columns and the gable, the archway of the entrance to the home. Now I hope you can see and enjoy the overall impact of our first phase of planting. And that's the palm trees. We've used four groups of threes, clusters, see, and we're trying to repeat this theme. Wouldn't you agree too that the home is really needing this extra height that we've provided? 
The other trees we'll have will be lower and installed. Now we're ready to do some final grading before we draw those lines for sod and prepare for our turf grass. Friends, now it's time to draw our sod lines and our bed lines and figure out what we're going to do here. We have had some rain, and so we had to stop for a moment. It's washed things in, and really it's been kind of good, even though it's been somewhat inconvenient. It's helped us see where we need improvements and where the water is really going to wash and drain down the driveway, off the building. So we encourage you, if you're building a new house, it's really a good idea to do that. Get the umbrella while it's raining and really find out how you can solve problems before they become that. And this is a great uh, stage of the game to really attack or approach drainage, really. Um, let's go to our landscape design plan. We had an architectural review committee that this plan was approved. And even though we're going to start here on the right hand side of the entrance over here, the right hand side, we've got some changes already. We didn't have palm trees on the original plan. We didn't know this gas tank was going to be here. With this existing tree, I'm just going to meander the grass down to a, a thin line here. Come back and really include this gas tank that'll be refilled somewhat regularly in a bed taking it out of the lawn area. So plants around it, low maintenance plants, that'll be easy to get to. And then I want to curve towards you now. Nice smooth round radius that'll come down the entrance and touch the driveway here. So we're really taking advantage of the sidewalk, trying to pull the whole entryway towards you here. So grass and turf will come in right in here. And won't that look good, these smooth lines? Now, one other thing got two existing trees here and along with the palm trees on the other side of the the driveway I'm not really sure should we bring grass through the between them or have them separate or grouped together I'm not really sure so I'll come back to that let's continue the line right across the entry take a look at our plan now and see what we have for the left side of the entry and we're pretty much sticking to our layout here with the exception of the three palms that have been added. We start right here at the driveway with a nice smooth round radius of turf, easy to mow, visually looks attractive and that's what we want. I'll continue it there and touch it to the driveway but a circle here. Now usually we try to link over. I didn't get to link there but we can do that at this opportunity. Taking this grass line or plant bed jumping across the walk and I've outlined it here with my foot so that hopefully you can see this little island. If you go back to the plan again, we had this bed continuing all the way to the street, which we'd love to do. But we have a community situation with a drain here. And so the water's got to come all the way across both driveways of the semicircle area and drain there for the community. So uh, naturally we've shortened that. So we won't have mulch running out all over into that area. We might put a little bed here as well. And so let's get busy. Let's get to work laying our sod. But while the guys are doing that, I thought I'd like to take an opportunity to show you some new and interesting plant varieties. A new plant variety. This if you can tell, it's in the holly family. It's a new island, it's called Robin, probably named after someone Robin. But uh, when friends propagate a, a new plant, uh, really they look for new names that are representative of this foliage type. This is a large growing specimen. As I look on the card here, it has some, some information uh, about 15 to 20 feet tall they can grow. Now you can say, well, why am I putting them all here? Oh, they'll have to be pruned or maintained somewhat. And it will grow about 12 feet wide as well. Now, it mentions it's a fast growing and most of the hollies are fairly fast. Full sun to part sun. And most of the hollies are known for that. But this glossy green foliage, when it flushes, it has a red tint to it. And then it converts to green, as you can see all the green here. A beautiful, beautiful shrub. We're going to use this as a foundation plant because of its size. These can be grown as big specimens too also. The other thing to mention, red berries. Red berries on every one of these plants. Now how do they do that? Well, they've propagated all females. 
hollies are dioecious, so the males don't bury or bloom like that. The females do, and so they can guarantee you to have red berries in this beautiful time of year that <clears throat> in the winter time when they're real showy. We might let this guy in the middle get up a little bit taller and keep these pruned or maintained a little bit lower. We'll use these on some other areas around the house. When it comes to border grass, you'd think we'd set it all, but not the case here. A new cultivar. You've heard of Evergreen Giant, which this resembles. This is Super Green Giant, propagated for its outstanding characteristics. A deeper, richer green color in the landscape and that will really have some long-term benefits and not have the same problems. More heat tolerance, more cold tolerance. Desirable plants for the future that will really be more permanent, have great characteristics for you to use in your landscape. We look forward to using this as well as some other new varieties but we'll have to invite you back next time. Join us again when we continue and complete this landscape project here on another Designer's Landscape. I'm Gary Allen, I'll see you.